Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Sunday. We want to thank you for always tuning in to Shiloh Wild, our Sunday school lesson on this morning. I bless our Heavenly Father. It is in Him that I live, move, and have our being. And we just want to thank you for always tuning in. So go ahead and hit like and share and let me see those hearts fly. As you go to prepare yourselves for this lesson on this morning, go ahead and gather your Bibles, your pens, your pencils, your notebooks, and get ready. And we are truly grateful, and we don't take it for granted that you always choose to tune in to us. Amen. Let us open with a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you on this morning. We thank you, oh God, that you allowed us another opportunity to open our eyes to see the dawn of a brand new day. I thank you for our viewers, oh God, and I thank you for their diligence to coming on to study the Sunday school lesson and to gain more wisdom and knowledge of your word. So right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus, I pray, oh God, that you would cleanse me, oh God, from all unrighteousness, creating me a clean heart, renew the right spirit within me, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you would increase and I would decrease. Use me as your vessel on this morning. It is in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Again, good morning, and it is a happy Sunday. Now, I see that we have begun a new unit on today. Well, we actually it started on last Sunday. Unit two, the word, the agent of creation. And our lesson subject for this morning is never too far away. And our key verse from the new, I'll read it from the NIV. Then the father realized that this was the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he and his whole household believed. Amen. Our lesson aims for today, we're going to understand the definition of the word faith and how Christ honors faithfulness. We're going to accept the fact that faith in Christ strengthens the relationship between Christ and the believer. And we're going to trust Jesus by faith and action and do what we cannot do. So again, I hope that you're excited to what God is going to teach us on this morning. And I pray, my friends, that as we continue to be diligent in seeking his face and studying his word, that we will always continue to, to strive to be all that God has created us to be. Amen. And I just thought about that title, Never Too Far Away. How many times, my friends, have we ever felt like Jesus or God has left us? You know, we go through certain situations and circumstances and we pray prayers, and sometimes they don't get answered, and sometimes they do. But it seems as though Jesus doesn't answer immediately. It seems as though he's far away. But by the end of this lesson, we're going to know that Jesus is always near. Yes, he is. He is. He's near and dear always to those who are faithful in seeking him. Amen. So as we, we talk about this lesson, and we're in John chapter 4, and we're going to take a look at verses 46 through 54. But just a little bit about John. We know that John was real close to Jesus Christ as he uh, did his ministry. We know that he was part of the inner circle. We know that John was often taken off. Peter, James, and John were taken off to be with our Lord and Savior by themselves. So there had to be a certain special bond and relationship. And that's news for us on today that we should always make sure that our relationship with God is near through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I just want to ask you, have you checked your personal relationship lately? Because he's really never too far away. And you know, why believing in Jesus Christ is essential. And we're going we're gonna to find that out as we talk about it. And look, we have to kind of go back and check out all of chapter 4. Now, we're very familiar with this uh, passage of scripture as we all have learned about the woman at the well and how Jesus approached her and, and told her to go out and, 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 and witness. And she actually was 
one of the first evangelists because she went out and told about, uh, she told to ask the people to come see a man. Oh, yes, she did. So that kind of like paints the picture, you know, brings us up to the backdrop of where we are in the lesson on today. And I just want to look at verse 39. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all that I ever did. So we know that Jesus is never too far away. So as we move on down to our scripture verses on today, to our lesson on today, and let me just give you a little background of the biblical context of, of where we are. So this particular situation in our lesson on this morning in verses 46 through 54, we see that this situation is of Jesus and his encounter with the nobleman, with royalty, okay? So this official is in the city of Capernaum as he's traveling in the beginning of his public ministry. So this encounter was, this nobleman was, was seeking a sign, a miracle, to make sure that Jesus was who he said he was. Now, you know, some of us in this day and time, we, we get it mixed up, and a lot of non-believers, or even some of us who profess to be believers, we always want to seek and look for a sign when all we have to do is believe in Jesus Christ, okay? And we'll talk about that a little later on. So I'll read from the New King James Version, John chapter 4, verses 46 through... The first outline is John chapter 4, verses 46 through 50. And it reads, So Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Amen. And we see Jesus um, <clears throat> in this uh, predicament, okay? And how many times have we been dealing with something, even right now, as we look at the world and see how chaotic and stressful it is, or you may be having some problems, you know, on your job, in your home, whatever you deal with, whatever you're going through, you, you, you're, you're in seek, you're searching, you're searching for a solution. So here, as we take a look at this desperate hope, desperate hope, the noble Ben was looking for some hope. Amen. So as we look at the scripture and, and when he heard that Jesus was coming out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and asked him to come to his house. Now that's significant, my friends, because sometimes in this life and whatever we're dealing with, we don't want to talk to Jesus or pray, come to church or do anything unless we want something. How many times have we neglected God when things were going great in our life? But as soon as something happens, then you want to be the main one at the altar asking for prayer. And once you get what you request, you go about your very business and you don't continue to seek God on a daily basis. We have to keep that in mind. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And, you know, as, as, as our lesson tells us about this, this, this noble man, you know, he was royalty. And a lot of times we... we think that, you know, we're high and mighty. We have certain positions and titles. We think that nothing can happen to us, but you do know that God is not a respecter of persons, and he don't care who you are, because if you're living in this flesh, you're going to have some problems. So don't think that you're exempt, and don't think that you don't need Jesus Christ. You need a relationship with him. Oh, yes, you do. You need a relationship with him. So as this man, this nobleman, this king talks to the nobleman who saw him coming and approached him. So Jesus, you know, and <laughs> I love how Jesus talks 
and interacted with people. And some might think that, you know, he was being sarcastic maybe. I mean, but he's just teaching, you know. And so he says to him in verse 48, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. Wow. That kind of lines up with what I said. Unless you see me performing that miracle, you're not going to believe that I am that I am. Unless, what happens, my friends, when you don't get that money to pay that light bill and they cut those lights off? What happens when you don't have the money for your car note and they come repo your car? Are you still going to believe in Jesus? Are you still going to pray? Or are you going to get upset? We get too caught up in trying to find out what Jesus can do for us. We're looking for the miracles and wonders, and it's not about that. It's all about relationship. Amen? But as we continue on in our lesson, the nobleman makes a plea. Sir, please come down before my child dies. And we know that we serve a, our Father God who's loving, and he loves his children, and even those who haven't given. He loves his creation. So the nobleman was persistent in his request. And Jesus answered him, and he said, go your way, your son will live. The man believed the word, and Jesus spoke to him and went his way. And as he was going down, the servants met him and told him, your son lives. And I thought about that, my friends, now, as we, we look at that. The man took, in verse 50, the man took Jesus at his word and departed. Now, as the man was going back, he had to believe that once he got there that his son was going to be alive again, right? How many times have we been in a dead-end situation, a dead-end relationship, a dead-end job, even at a dead church, and we think that there is no life in it, but we know, oh, hallelujah, that the God we serve is able. All we have to do is make our request made known we have to have an active prayer life and it's not always about what we see with our physical eyes it has to be what we see with our spiritual eyes and if we have that personal relationship we shouldn't always want God to do what we want him to do when we want him to do it we have to continue to to, to just see it that it's done and not just expect the miracle because sometimes he doesn't heal like the way we want him to heal. You know, I, I've, I've talked to several people, and, you know, we pray for their, their family member, and they've gone on uh, to, to glory, and, and they get upset. Well, I, we pray for uh, God to heal my child, or we pray for him to heal my mama. And, you know, we have to think about that thing that, as we were reminded this morning, that before we were formed in our mother's womb, our, our, our lives and everything was already planned out for us. So just because it doesn't look like healing how we want it, oh, hallelujah, just because it doesn't look like healing how we want it, they're healed when they're with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we have to change our mindset and stop making demands on God because it's his way, his will. He is in control. He is in charge. But in this instance with the, the nobleman, when he got back, the, the, where the servants came and met him and, and told him, and he asked them what time, what specific time, and he realized that it was at the same time where he made the request for Jesus. And let me go ahead and read Confirmed Faith, verses 51 through 54. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, your son lives. Amen. Then he inquired of them the hour when he got better. And they said to him yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives. And he himself believed and his whole household. This again is the second sign Jesus did when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. So look, you see, and that's important that, that we get this, verse 53. 
So the father knew that it was at that same hour. And he believed, and his whole household believed. So saints of God, my brothers and sisters, sometimes what you're going through is not always about you. It's about your, your family, your household, those of you you come in contact on a daily basis. Your struggles, your trials, your tribulations, it's not about you. It's about God getting the glory. Amen. We have to remember that as we continue on this journey called life. And we also have to be reminded, my friends, that if we're going to be faithful, if we're going to confirm our faith, and we have to continue to live confidently, which means we have to trust in the word, the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E, that's the book for me, the word of God. And we have to be reminded, especially in these days and times we're living in, I can't emphasize that enough, that we have to keep our faith in God. Amen. God is truly, truly, truly worthy of all of our praise on this morning. And as a closing thought, when we, uh, as we prepare to go, the first two of Jesus' sign miracles in Cana led people to trust him, his disciples and the royal official and his entire household. So this is, again, a lesson for us that we have to, confirm who God is, but we have to make sure that we keep that confident faith in him despite our circumstances. It's not always what you see. We have to remain confident in this. We will be confident. And let me give you a couple of points on how you can remain confident and make sure that you confirm your faith. First of all, we have to spend time with God. We have to be in prayer. And not only making our requests or telling him what we want him to know, we have to make some time, some quiet meditation time so we can hear his voice. God does speak. You may not hear him audibly. Some do. But he speaks. He speaks through, the, through his word and even the truth that is not written in his word. And he speaks through those around you. And it's also important to have that confirmed faith that we make sure that we keep the right people around us. Amen. Like Jesus had his inner circle and John is writing and telling us this, this today. We have to make sure that we have people around us who are going to encourage us and remind us of the faith that we have. Amen. And we have to make sure that, that we are continuing to walk by faith and not by sight. Continue to seek God's face and continue to be holy and <clears throat> Let us close out with a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for your word on today. We thank you, O oh God, that, that our faith is confirmed through you. We thank you, O oh God, for our relationship through with you through your son, Jesus Christ. O oh God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will consent, continue to manifest your presence within us, O oh God. Continue to help us, God, to continue to, to seek your face, to continue to develop and maintain our relationship with you. Lord, I thank you, and I pray a special blessing upon your people on this day. It is in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen, amen, amen. And if you wish, and we thank you truly for always tuning in to Shiloh, if you wish to sow a seed or contribute to the ministry, the Two ways of giving are listed on the screen. And make sure you join us at 11 a.m. for our worship service. And again, as we prepare for five this evening, our very own minister in training, Robin Jack, will be giving her first public message. And we want you to tune in here. Or if you're local, come on, join us in the sanctuary. Amen. And we just thank you for always supporting us. And this is your girl. We love you. Not a 